and then how do I stop it? So. The house is opening, guys. Uh, is a Spanish 
Uh, uh, occasionally people also speak translate into English uh, as well. It's not, uh, and uh, to me this is glorious, this is, this is how it is, this is history, history, the written history of migrations, labor migrations that have happened in these uh, societies. So my, uh, from my own experiences is that first of all kids are different, They're, they have different modes of register and what they do. Uh, uh, and how central language is to their, uh, their life. Uh, so, yeah. Next question. Uh, first, I, I <clears throat> maybe not a question, but maybe a, a request, which is that you know I, I got cramps from like you misquoting your paper as you were speaking, and uh, um, which is in, in line with your your uh, your uh, moment uh, by Woody Allen and Faulkner. But um, I would hope that uh, there's a way that we could uh, access your your words uh, online or something. I really appreciate uh, having a chance to read and, uh, and unpack your. Your presentation a bit sure, more. Happily, I'll, I'll give it to you. That'd be wonderful. Uh, I uh, I wanted to ask your thoughts about um, the, the the notion of global citizenship, and um, uh, you know, uh, as a, it was uh, something that uh, I myself an immigrant and uh, living here for over 25 years already, but um, a practice of work that takes me to other parts of the world, and I always thought about that as a opportunity to to take in um, um, different different ways of doing things and being and incorporating into my own and, and as a way to open up um, my, my own sense of self. Um, I was listening to Bandana Shiva speaking about uh, how to how do how do we move forward from the situation we, we live in and, and she was uh, an adamant advocate for the rebirth of a of a global citizenship consciousness, and, and I wonder what your thoughts are about that in place of what you were talking about today, and, and if that is possible um, beyond, uh, so moving beyond um, the idea of actually traveling from one place to another. I don't know if I'm making sense with my question. Yes, yes. Uh, beginning with the notion of global citizenship, I think that there is an element of false uh, False identification. False identification. The morning after September 11, I'm walking uh, towards my office, and dear, dear uh, friend, colleague, I've known him for decades, uh, on Columbia campus, very progressive politically, etc., comes to me and says, "But I mean, why did they did this?" And I said, "You know, I didn't come to ask you what Timothy McVeigh did." The morning after Oklahoma bombing. Why do you think just because his name was Muhammad and my name is Hanif, I have an inroad into the mind of a mass murderer? It's a false identity by virtue of one name or another. For, or a sense of, uh, for example, guilt that if uh, Osama bin Laden is doing something you think, then I have to feel ashamed because of, uh, I'm a Muslim. Or any other false uh, identity. But the the opposite of that is not a vacuous global citizenship. The opposite of that, I believe, is what Zimmer called web of group affiliation that we generate around ourselves. The notion of self that you said, self is not abstract. Self, Zimmer said, or the self that becomes manifested in society, is the, is the result of the number of web of group affiliations with which we identify. Whatever those webs of uh, group affiliations uh, are. Now, through social networking, an additional circle is made possible by virtue of uh, in this web of group affiliation. And uh, I have things far more in common with people in remote parts of the world, but nothing in common with my own neighborhood. And yet, and vice versa. So, my being Iranian and living, uh, having lived in the US for uh, 40 years means nothing, and this is what I, in answer to Muhammad's uh, conversation with me, the question of hyphen, I don't know what the, as soon as, as, as soon as you say I'm an Arab American, you have cross-essentialized Arab and American, as if there are only one kind of Arab and one kind of American. The hyphen cross authenticates them both. Whereas far more realistic is this diversity 
and multiplicities of the group affiliations with which we, uh, we identify. That is, you professionally may identify with somebody who lives actually in the, uh, in the enemy land, as it were. But emotive, I mean, we just saw this fantastic play last night about a Lebanese uh, poet and an Israeli uh, uh, translator who's in love with, uh, with her poetry. So, well, by web of group affiliation, I mean suddenly poetry becomes a web that creates two people that are supposed to be each other's enemies. I mean, the whole drama is because of this cross, crossing of these two boundaries that generates a tertiary mo mode of uh, solidarity. That, uh, I mean, the whole drama is that they have to surpass that, uh, and the homoerotic aspect helps it uh, unfold better. Uh, th this is far more real than anything. Uh, Abi Mograbi, fantastic Palestinian, uh, is, uh, I mean, look at the, the thing, Israeli documentary filmmaker, has a uh, documentary called Avenge But One of My Two Eyes. I don't know if you have seen it. It's absolute one of the best documentaries on Palestinian situation by an Israeli documentary filmmaker. Avenge But One of My Two Eyes. What Avi does is, he goes and asks uh, Israelis to talk about their experiences of, of, of Holocaust as Holocaust survivors. And then visually he shows the predicament of Palestinians and Israelis unbeknownst to themselves are providing a narrative of Palestinian predicament. And the result is a fantastic documentary. Hope it makes some sense. I'm sorry, we have just a short time for questions. Um, we're gonna take just one more and I, I invite you all to um, approach Dr. Dabashi and speak more during the, the lunch time or the breaks. Um, but yeah, so we have one more time for questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Dabashi. Uh, thank you, wonderful, Dr. Um, I, I have a question. Um, I'm going to preface my question with a little bit of a description of myself. So I'm a, a supposed or a so-called Arab. Uh, and I have uh, Shia, Sunni, Kurdish, Turkish. Azerbaijani roots somehow mixed in there. Um, I, you know, according to some writers, I'm totally at war with myself. You know, so <laughs> it's kind of disturbing. But um, I, I, what I've noticed as an author um, is that there is this notion that a lot of us have of return and um, returning to something, and it's a very vague notion. And I wish, I hope you could uh, maybe talk to me or talk to us a little bit about this idea of return, uh, the pitfalls and the dangers and maybe, you know, the greater, you know, what is it that we're really thinking about or aspiring towards when we, when we talk about return? I think, uh, just, you know, like every other great question, the answer is in it, mainly the hybridity, the, the multifaceted aspect, which is real, of your identity, which is very similar to my identity. I also come from the southern part of the world. I mean, to make it uh, even more attractive, uh, I, I, I'm the result of a devout Shi mother, very white in complexion, brunette and, and uh, light brown eyes, and a socialist father, uh, very dark black in, the, in his uh, complexion. Uh, they, they call him Dadisi. His name was Khodadad, they call him Dadisi, or Dadi the Black. And so we had a little bit of a Hotel de Desdemona situation. Uh, <laughs> mine is a mine is Trump. And they, they married and they loved each other and they had three sons, so obviously they had a splendid time. Uh, uh, so many people say, well, how, come, you know, how could you be a Muslim and then a socialist? I said, well, and then to make it even more exciting, we had a Mullah Javad, the blind Mullah Javad who would come uh, once a month, uh, and he was a devout Khomeini activist. He was back in the 60s. My father, well, then the other thing is he, was, he worked for the railroad. So three weeks of the month that he, has, he had money for his vodka and cooking for us and listening to Amr Khosum and uh, Abdul Wahab, he was a he was complete Mossadegh nationalist. Fourth week of the month, he ran out of money, he had finished his vodka, so he couldn't drink when he was cooking and listening to the thing, so he became a Nasserite socialist in the, in the, the fourth week of the, of the month. 
You see, this but autobiographical by, by way of saying, they, and then depending when Mullah Jawad came, they got into a discussion, but it, it, it differed month to month, whether it hit my father in his nationalist for three weeks or <laughs> socialist for three weeks. The point is that in that real, fantastic, cosmogonic reality, the return to what? You follow? I'm, I'm supposed to return to where? First of all, there is no return. 1997, I was just telling uh, Dr. Samia, 1997, I, I went back to Iran after 90 years. I mean, it was a completely different land. Radically different land. I moved from New Jersey to New York, I had a difficulty uh, already, just uh, crossing the Hudson River. You see, the thing is, you never step in that river twice. We, did, we change, we, we vary, uh, we become different creatures. So this return is actually, is actually a fiction, because there is no home to return. Home is where you hang your hat and say no to power. Finish. <laughs> <laughs> to finish the Q and A, thank you so much, and thank you again, Dr. Sadashi. Let's give him another a round of applause, please.